evening! Welcome to Tweet Up, where we take video games, music, movies, and more way too seriously. I'm Neil, this is Zach, and tonight we're going to be talking about the 1981 album, Valis, by Philip K. Dick. Also a book. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, so, uh, in 1974, author Philip K. Dick had uh, experienced an event uh, in his life. Uh, probably a psychotic break, uh, but possibly contact from a supreme being or maybe even aliens. And as a result of that event, we got the Valis Trilogy, which is unfinished, but uh, first and foremost of which is the novel Valis. Uh, who's the main character of Valis, Neil? Philip K. Dick. <laughs> or Horse Lover Fat. It's uh, the same character. It is the same character. Uh, this is a tricky book to read. Yeah, so I mean, <laughs> I guess you can talk a little bit about Philip K. Dick, yeah, you know, mostly K. as a science fiction author, you know, uh, wrote a lot of short stories. It's become quite famous. Yeah, wrote a lot of short stories and that were in, you know, the magazine of fantasy and science fiction, lots of different magazines. Um, you ever seen Blade Runner? I've seen things. Hmm? Well, yes. Uh, so, you know, his first novel, Solar Lottery in 1955, which is right here. Um, lots of great album or great, great novels. <laughs> the World Jones Made in 1956, one of my favorites. Um, Man in the High Castle, which was made and recently made into an Amazon series, mm -hmm. which is really good as well. Um, that's an awesome novel. This Three Stigmata of Palmer Eldridge, 1965. It's a like kind of a fan favorite. Yeah. Um, and then 1968, Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep, made into the film Blade Runner. Yeah. Um, lots of his short stories and novels have been made into movies. You have Minority Report, mm -hmm. um, uh, Total Recall, mm -hmm. lots of stuff. Um, a Scanner Darkly a Scanner was made Darkly. into a full-length film starring Keanu Reeves. Indeed. Do you like Keanu Reeves? Get in the comments. And uh, we're going to talk about his 1981 album, or <laughs> novel, Valis. No. Which is kind of weird because I would not say Valis is a science fiction novel at all. No, really. I don't know that you can actually put it into <laughs> a uh, genre, per se. Um, it's crazy. And sometimes but is it? I don't, is it? I don't find it that is crazy. It? It's difficult to. On, yeah. Okay. So, as we <laughs> alluded to earlier, the the narrator is Philip K. Dick, uh, and then the main character is Horse Lover Fat, which translates into Philip K. Dick. Uh, and Philip K. Dick is describing Horse Lover Fat's uh, situation, and, and you know he's the narrator, and but acting like they're different people at some points and kind of also the same person at different other or others. Yeah, so you, the reader, are aware... You want to talk about an unreliable narrator. That man. Horse Lever Fat is Philip K. Dick. They yes. are the same person. But both of them are characters in the novel. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, essentially... You going to talk plot? Yeah, we're going to talk plot. So, uh, Horse Lover Fat has... Basically, two female friends, uh, Gloria, who dies of suicide, Sherry, who dies of cancer, mm -hmm. and then suffers... Uh, he gets zapped by a pink beam of light. Well, yes, that happens yeah. at some point. At some point. This is That happens before... Well, yeah. Yeah, okay. Oh. Well, why are you going out of order? All right. <laughs> I'm going in the order of the... The actual story. The novel. Okay. Yeah, so, I mean, it really starts out talking about Gloria, yes. right? <clears throat> and so, Horse Lover Fat, a.k.a. Philip K. Dick, has this... <clears throat> he he is... Has this desperation to try and save people that are in a downward spiral, yes. essentially. Um, and that's what I would say the first third of the book is kind of about, right? Totally. At some point, yes... Philip K. Dick, Horse Lover Fat, has had this experience that he believes is a transmission from God mm -hmm. that allows him to save his son, 
Christopher, which actually happened. Yeah. So in here's real life. the thing. Yeah. Okay, you're thinking this guy's crazy. He, he he's thinks that he's got zapped by a pink beam of light that gave him divine insight and, and the hidden truths of our universe. Well, one of the things that this experience uh, informed him of was that his son had a, an inguinal hernia uh, mm -hmm. and basically told him how to describe it to the doctor to get the diagnosis. This kid had been going to the doctor for months and months and months crying, he's an infant, they can't figure out what's wrong with him. The inguinal hernia could have been fatal, and he somewhere got that information that saved his kid's life. Yes. So was it real, or was it fake, or was it something in between? The world is a strange place. The world is a strange place. Um, We're glad you're here. But then, so, Horse Lover Fat's reaction to the death of these two friends is... He really starts uh, investigating, you know, where this pink, the origins of this pink beam of light, and yeah. he's there. So a lot he of the book, friends probably the, the Ripidon Society. The part, <laughs> the parts of the book that are hard are these, I think, long stretches where he's talking about Mircea Eliad and like all of these. Um, Philosophers and theologians over time, you, you got a lot of Gnostic Christianity, mm -hmm. um, you know, and he comes to some conclusions mm -hmm. about the nature of reality. Which he documents in his Exegesis, yes. uh, which is something that Philip K. Dick actually read, uh, or wrote, and you can read it. Yeah. It's pretty intense. Yeah. Uh, pretty far over my head. You'd need, like, a theology degree or something to understand it. Well, yeah, yeah I, I, there, you can break it down into some main points, essentially, that the real world is overlapped with 1st century A.D., yeah. you know, and these the early Christian community um, was able to transmit this special knowledge. Mm. And that, that's where the, the, the term gnosis, knowledge, so the Gnostics are these early Christian communities that had this special knowledge. So they were sort of these mystery cults. Mm -hmm. um, at least that's what, that's what they call them if you take a course on Gnostic history by a Christian uh, <laughs> professor. <laughs> professor. Yeah. Um, but anyway, <laughs> that's not important to the overall story. You'd better tell the captain. We've got to land as soon as we can. This woman has to be gotten to a hospital. A hospital? What is it? It's a big building with patients, but that's not important right now. Basically, Horse Lover Fat, a.k.a. Philip K. Dick, gets really deep in trying to investigate the nature of reality mm -hmm. because of the deaths of these two women and his own suicide attempt and uh his contact with zebra his you you're saying and no? his time in a mental hospital oh. and his contact yeah. with zebra yes yeah. um you know, and then what happens we don't need to go that's a, a large portion of the novel yeah and then him and he has these two friends Kevin and <laughs> David um so here's my Here's my interpretation yeah. of these two characters. So Kevin is a cynic, right? Nice. To me, Kevin is Philip K. Dick. David, who is a Catholic, mm -hmm. is a is a searcher, is a believer. Mm -hmm. David is horse lover fact. I could see that. So you 100%. have essentially four characters, but they're really just one, one yeah. character. Yeah. You know? Now, that's my interpretation Honestly, of the novel. Having just reread it seems legit. But you have this group of characters and they go to see this movie because uh Kev yeah. Kevin has seen this movie. Yeah. And he says, You guys gotta come see this because they've been having conversations. Kevin's with aware of Horse Lover Fat's yes. experience with yeah. the vast active living intelligence yes. system. That's what Vallis stands for. Yeah. Um and so they take him to see this movie uh, yeah uh Take him to go see this movie, which is apparently very fo closely following the events of Horse Lover Fat's life and 
the real world. Uh, it comes to the same conclusions and the same uh, like code words yeah. that Horse Lover Fat has been given in his sort of like theological journey. Yeah, uh, the film is called and the book is called Vallis. Uh, the uh, the main plot points are alien space probe in uh, that's called Vallis that exposes. Uh, Essentially, the Watergate uh, investigation. Ferris Freehound. Ferris Freehound, yeah. <laughs> Which uh, is uh, Nixon. Yeah. And uh, it's funny because that it's is... It's another book, Radio Free Album, is yes. the plot of Valis. Which was, which was published posthumously. Yeah. Is that, am I saying that correctly? Humamously. <laughs> After Philip K. Dick's death. But yes, this novel is essentially the, the story of the movie that's in Valis. And we mentioned that Valis was uh, intended to be a trilogy. The first book is Valis. The second book is The Divine Invasion, which is sick. Uh, the third book was supposed to be The Owl in Daylight, mm -hmm. but that one was never finished. I don't know if it's ever been released. I, uh, it has not. Oh, so, it may be in partial form. Yeah. yeah. And so you, the transmigration of Timothy Archer is kind of considered the, the mm -hmm. third book. Yeah. Um, but Radio Free Album is probably the most entertaining read out of And it is probably the most closely related to Valis. Yeah. 100%. Um, totally. Yeah. But anyway, they see this film that has, that reinforces the ideas that Horse Lover Fat has, you know, discovered in his theological journey, right? Mm -hmm. And he's amazed by this. They have to get in contact with the filmmakers. And because Horse Lover Fat is Philip K. Dick, who is, at this point, a famous writer, yeah. is able to make these connections... And they meet with the filmmakers, and these filmmakers, so you have, uh, oh, before they go and meet these filmmakers, they form this, the Ripidon, the Ripidon Society. Society, and their motto, which I love, is, fish cannot carry guns. Yes. <laughs> uh, fish being, like, the, the Christian, Christian symbol. symbol, yes. Yeah, which um, is actually what triggered Philip K. Dick's. Uh, event yeah. in, in real life. He had a, a impacted wisdom tooth, he was at home, he got a drugstore delivery, and she's wearing bingo, a bingo. Yeah, she was wearing, the girl was wearing a necklace, and the rest is history. Um, I One thing that I thought was interesting about this, the protagonists go in search of the director of the film, Man in High Castle, which is yeah. you know, a book, uh, yeah. and then another little book called Infinite Jest, yeah. searching for the creators of the film there. Yeah. Uh, Boy, we've got common tastes. Um, so you got Eric Lampton. Yeah, Eric the, Lampton. The the actor. Mm -hmm. And it, he's like a rock star mm -hmm. uh, and a film star. Mm -hmm. I think very much supposed to be a David Bowie-like yeah. character mm -hmm. in this. And then you have uh, yeah, Meanie. Much more of a Ziggy Stardust than Eric Clapton. For sure. <laughs> and then you have Meanie who makes the music, mm -hmm. which is also very important. Mm -hmm. And then you have Linda, right, uh, who is Eric's wife. So the Ripidon Society, which is four people, but <laughs> in my interpretation, one person, uh, go to meet the people who made this movie, and there they find, they are introduced to... The Messiah. Uh, yeah, Sophia, yeah. who is a child, but is, you know, they... The people who made this movie, you know, they have the same understandings of the nature of the universe that mm -hmm. Philip K. Dick does. Yeah. And at this point, when Philip K. Dick meets this child, Sophia, yeah. horse lover fat is gone yeah. because Philip K. Dick is now Philip yeah. K. Dick. Yeah. Um, and they have a discussion. And there's a long theological uh, kind of treatise that is given to Philip and Kevin mm -hmm. and David, and they're supposed to go and spread it through the world. Worship humanity. Yeah, they say that there is no God, basically that God is humanity, and mm -hmm. that has always been the case. Yep. Okay? And then they go home, and very shortly <laughs> there, thereafter, <gasps> Sophia is killed accidentally by Meanie, but the composer, the electric, uh, the Brian Eno character. Yeah, there you go. So you have, basically, they saw a movie with David Bowie and Brian <laughs> Eno, 
and they go and meet with them, and David Bowie and Brian Eno say, this little girl is God, and they're like, well, you're David Bowie and Brian Eno, and she's saying yeah, all the right things. Yeah. And then they go home, <laughs> and the Brian Eno character accidentally, like, electrocutes God, somehow. Laser beam in her head, actually. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Which, um, can't you just see Brian Eno doing that? And then, Horse Lover Fat is back. Yep. Uh, so it recreates the split, mm -hmm. and then Horse Lover Fat kind of, like, goes out into the world to explore and, you find know, find, find answers, mm -hmm. find theological answers. He's a, the searcher. And that's the end of the book. Yep. So it might seem strange. <laughs> might. <laughs> seem. But, like, so here's... I love this book. Here's what it's I... It's just crazy. Here's what I think Philip K. Dick is sort of, like, communicating in this novel. It's that... Lay it on me. All of us... Well, maybe not all of us. I think many of us have a religious impulse, right? Yeah. And especially when someone close to us dies, we have a religious impulse. We want to know what is the nature of reality. Desperate is this person you're gone for help forever? Or cursing somebody. Yes. But all of us, even the most devout, you know, religious person, has doubts, has their, their part of themselves that lives in reality and does not have tangible evidence. Boy, it'd be nice to see There's a There's no proof of God, no proof of your belief system. So I think what Philip K. Dick is doing in this book is... <clears throat> he, the, the Philip K. Dick character in this book, is the realist, realist, you know. The horse lover fat character is the believer, the searcher, the looking for truth in the nature of reality. Um, and when they find that truth for just a brief moment, they're put back together. Mm -hmm. But then when, you know, Sophia, when, the, when that truth is kind of dispelled, <clears throat> I think it is... In the novel, it seems that Philip K. Dick realizes that they had been duped, yeah. right? Um, and so it's not seen as some tragedy, right. you know? It's seen, see, seen as a, oh, this was not, this, this was not the final answer. Yeah. And then, you know, Horse Lover Fat still exists, but he's, like, gone. Mm -hmm. And I think the, the idea is that there is... <clears throat> Both of these parts of ourselves are necessary. Mm -hmm. You know, we need the realist and we need the searcher, you know? And I think both of those can exist and not be in opposition to one another, you know? There's no reason you can't say, yes, I'm a Christian, but also be like, eh, I'm not always sure. Yeah. <laughs> I have doubts constantly, you know what I mean? You can and also I, say, I'm an atheist, but... Heck if I know, yeah. and no offense if you're real. Some people say we're just a computer simulation run by a higher species. Is that true? It is. My guy sucks. Want to trade guys for a little while? Oh, never mind. I'll stick with this pile of crap I already have. Yeah, so I, and that's why this novel has always spoken to me, mm -hmm. and I, uh, reading a geek, Reading it again, uh, I don't know. I I find it to be one of his more straightforward, you know. Interesting. Because I mean, a lot of like the three stigmata of Palmer Eldritch. Yeah. What is that about? Yeah. Like, I mean, you, we could talk about Agreed. that. Yeah. If you but, want us to, get in the comments. But on my most recent reading of Vallis, I that's how I like thought about it, and it sort of like really came together for me. You know what I mean? Man, you just made me enjoy the book even more. Uh, I love the way you think, brother. Uh, it's cool being friends with you. <laughs> uh, I personally don't think that Valis is my most entertaining book, but now that I... Or Philip K. Dick... I'm not it, saying it's the most entertaining, <laughs> but I, I find it to be a clear statement of his, like, uh, thought write? process. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, no, you, you definitely... Uh, I'm looking at Game Players of Titan. That's a great book, too. It's a great book. There's so many great... Uh, if you have not read Philip K. Dick, 
Ooh. Probably don't start with Valak. Don't, yeah. <laughs> um, um, Scanner Darkly, Scanner Darkly, maybe. Radio Free Album, maybe. Yeah, um, The World Jones Made is a fantastic that's book. That's a pretty big one. Yeah. Uh, obviously, people Ubik talk is about really the Android's Dream of Electric Sheep. I don't think that is really no. super great. But. Uh, the Man in the High Castle is a good starting point. It Although, is. not really. That was not really sci fi either, you yeah. know? It's more alternate history. Game players are tight. That Game was pretty that, That's a good book. That's where I'm missing yes. you for your first one. Yeah. Um, yeah, we uh, are obviously big Philip K. Dick fans. Uh, Neil turned me on to him back in you know my late teens, uh, and uh, I'm grateful that he did it. it yeah, yeah, man, I love like '50s, '60s, '70s sci-fi. You uh, know, yeah. I love Harlan Ellison. I love Theodore Sturgeon. I love James Blish. But I mean. If you're serious about it, I think you got to admit that Philip K. Dick is like the the he 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 is he goes far beyond science oh, fiction. Oh yeah, you know what for I mean. Sure. Yeah, it's, it's it is literature. If you want to be snooty, yeah. If you want to tweet up about it, you know, <laughs> Philip K. Dick. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, well, thanks for uh, recommending that we reread this one, man. It was, yeah, it was a good experience. And thank you for joining us. Uh, if you're still here, please subscribe. Uh, <laughs> you're obviously our type of people. So, you know, stick around and get notifications when we do stuff like this. Neil, crash and burn. Crash and burn. All right, thanks for watching Tweet Up. Peace. Peace.